If you've been looking for a way to play your NES Classic Edition wirelessly, then look no further than 8-Bit Do's NES Classic Edition set. Hey Nintendo fans and collectors, if you're anything like me, if you picked up the NES Classic Edition, I was very fortunate to actually find a version of it, then you are probably wondering, why does it only have a three foot cord in 2016 to play it? You can't play wirelessly. So that's why 8 Do has this controller. Now this controller has been released previously, but never with this dongle that makes this compatible with the NES Classic Edition. This sells for $40 as this package set, but it's really interesting because the controller itself is actually Bluetooth, which means it works with your Android device, your iPhone, iOS, Apple and Windows computers as well. You can use this for so many different devices, which is absolutely fantastic. Let's just take a look at the box packaging. Clearly this is for the 8-bit era. Like the NES Classic definitely inspired this and the original NES. So you do have the dongle here and the controller shown off. On the top we continue that aesthetic for the NES. On the sides they're just gray. On the back you have some information about how this is compatible with all the devices that I already listed off. And it also tells you how to pair this controller and says that it's Bluetooth enabled as well. All right, so let's actually unbox this and get to this. I'm also going to pair this up with my NES Classic just to show you. I might pair it with my phone if I get the chance in this video as well because it does pair it with your phone in case you're into retro gaming on your phone. All right, so let's just turn this over. We do have a little bit of instructions that comes with this. Actually, this isn't really instructions. This just tells you everything that's on there. Turbo, you have turbo on both. You have down and select buttons and everything like that. Of course, we have our D-pad, A, B, X, and Y buttons. But here's the controller itself. Now right away, obviously, this has the same design as the original NES Classic Edition controller. The coloring's slightly different. However, the biggest difference is you have now X and Y buttons, and you also have L and R buttons on this, which makes this controller great, not just for NES gaming, but any sort of retro gaming, like Super Nintendo. This might actually be used for Sega Genesis games, because it has enough buttons now, and everything like that. The back of the controller just says 8-bit do on it, so it does have that different branding information. And now on the controller itself, you have the start button, which is the way that you're going to pair this controller. But first of all, you need the dongle actually to pair this. So let's open this up. This should have the charging cable and also the dongle to hook this into our system or connect it to our system. So first of all, if you're wondering about charge on this controller, it lasts up to 20 hours, I'm told. So you can plug this in, it's a micro USB charging cable. It looks like it's quite short, but that's fine. I have a lot of these lying around. So this will last 20 hours of battery life, which is incredible. And here is our dongle for this system, for the system of the controller, I guess, set up. So what you're gonna do is, this would plug into your NES Classic Edition system. It's the same as a connection for a Wii remote, so you can actually plug this into a Wii remote as well. And there's a little button on here to pair it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug my NES Classic Edition controller right here. And then I'm going to plug in the dongle. So once that is plugged in correctly, what you will do is you can see a little blinking blue light on this occasionally. So this controller itself, what I'm going to have to do to turn it on is hold start for three seconds. After you hold start, you should see that there's this button blinking. Then I'm going to click the button on the system itself. And at some point, they should obviously be paired and they should no longer blink with each other. So let me just hit this one more time. Maybe I perhaps didn't hit the button correctly. And we're just going to wait for this to pair up. There we go. So now that's a solid blue light and that is a solid blue light. I have both of them connected up. And if I were to actually press buttons on this, it works with my NES Classic Edition system. So I'm just going to move up my different recording studio, I guess, right here, right now. I'm just going to connect this up so that it actually holds a bit better and you can take a look at the system itself while it is on. So now that the system is on and you can see how this actually works, I'm just going to hold up the controller for you and show you that this is working wirelessly, which is wonderful. So I hit the A button and it goes to here. Obviously it's on mute right now, but right now I could play Kirby if I wanted to. Also, if you want to uh, reset, there is a way of resetting this, which is pretty interesting. It does tell you, I think, on this right here. So if I pull up this, it does tell you how to do a few different things on this. So you have down plus select to reset for the NES Classic Edition wirelessly, which is great. So down plus select. So down select should reset my system to go back to the main screen. So that's wonderful. Now you can reset without even ever getting up out of your chair. You have turbo B and turbo A. You also have power on the NES controller hold for three seconds and you have the power. For two player support, please power off your NES Classic before inserting a second retro receiver. So you can play this with two players. Now to show you how this does work really well with the system, it, the input, there is no input lag whatsoever. 
as soon as I hit it, it goes. So if I open Super Mario Bros. and I start to play a game of this, there should be no input lag. I used to moderately speedrun this, but I'm not going to lie and say that I'm actually really good at this game at all. I missed that jump a little bit. Alright, let's go down the pipe. So this input lag, there's nothing, and then as long as I hit down plus select, it should reset me back out here, which is absolutely wonderful. If you're looking to play two players, I'm going to plug back in my other controller. So my second controller is going to go in, and now I'm going to go to some two-player game. So if it was a two-player game that you could play at the same time, so let's go to, let's go to Mario Bros. Where's Mario Bros? The classic fighting game. There we go. So let's see if it recognizes two controllers, because I do have two controllers plugged in right now. So let's go to that, and let's see if I can actually enter in. Let's see if both controllers work. Right now there's some music going on, but you can't really hear it. So let's see, on the one controller I can use Luigi, and on the other controller I can control Mario. So the two players does work obviously with this retro receiver. Now this does work so well, I just want to show you it also connecting up clearly to my phone as well. So we're just going to move this back down for a moment and bring in my phone. So on my phone I'm going to enable Bluetooth and I'm going to disable this here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to unplug that obviously. And now I'm going to hold this for three seconds, and it powers off. So on my phone, I do have that 8-bit do NES gamepad, so I'm just going to turn this on by holding it for three seconds. It's going to turn on, and now I'm going to try and pair to it as well on my phone. So it's a little bit hard to see on my phone, I do realize that, but it's connecting right now. Now once it connects, you do need to map the buttons out properly. Once the buttons are mapped out properly, you can use this for retro gaming on your phone too. Unable to connect. Why is it unable to connect? Let's try that one more time. Sometimes you do have to try this a few times, but in general this works immediately, which is fantastic. Retro gaming, if you want to remap all the buttons inside of your emulator, that's what you'd have to use on your phone. Inside your emulator then you would have to... See, okay, so let's actually go here. Let's go to off and on. Once I turn it on again, we're going to see if it pairs now. I don't know who Peter is. I'm not going to connect to his MacBook Air. Pair with this device. Okay. Connected as input device. There we go. So maybe just turning off my Bluetooth and turning it back on. So now when I go home, you can look on the screen and you can probably see if you can see it. I'm actually controlling my phone right now with this controller. I'm actually moving through all of my different options on my phone, collecting clicking different things as I have Link in the background from The Legend of Zelda. So this works with your Android device. It can also work with your computer. Apparently you can also pair game pads with this, not game pads, but game controller pros or pro controllers from the from the Wii U, obviously, also PlayStation controllers and Xbox controllers, you can use this with on your systems as well. So this is a wonderful product from 8-Bit Do. I would highly recommend it. If you're interested, it's $40. I think this is fantastic because, let's be honest, the Classic Edition not having wireless is absolutely insane to me in 2016. So thank you so much. If you're interested in this, please check it out. There's a link in the description below the video. I highly recommend, of course, you check it out. Thanks so much for watching. Feel free to fill that like bucket, follow me on all the social media links in the description below the video. Guess what? 12 days of Nintendo Christmas starts tomorrow, so be sure to check that out very soon as well. Have a good day, everyone.